Yeah, excited to get going. I think we've had an incredibly successful nine or ten months, whatever it is, since we played last. Uh, finished 2019 very well, uh, went in ten straight games, 13 of 14. Players did a really good job in the summer of taking things they needed to do individually and focusing on those and improved. Uh, there were some remarkable improvements just as they came back for the fall. I think our strength coach, Jim Krumpos, did an outstanding job with them, as he always does in the fall. I've had several people comment on the physicality of our team and the improvements that a lot of the players have made in that regard, and then really took a hard look at a couple things that we wanted to improve on um, from the mound defensively um, and have addressed those areas in terms of staff, in terms of development organization of practice, all of those types of things and had a really good three or four weeks of January and February leading into this and really did a nice job of establishing what we want the identity of our team to be. And uh, it's time to go play somebody else and, and really looking forward to the competition of that. How, how have the freshmen, uh, I guess, gotten used to just college ball and getting used to the simple guys? Yeah, I, I think the biggest jump any player makes in their life is from high school baseball to top level division one baseball, which we play. Now the advantage that we have is we have some very talented young players and pitchers uh, specifically in this class that have really good aptitude, really good athleticism, and probably more importantly, or most importantly, we have some good pieces of leadership around them. You'll get to talk to some of these guys after uh, we're done here. And uh, they've set a really good example, you know, in terms of doing what you need to do to be successful. Um, you know, some of them have experienced a lot of success and, you know, some failure as well. And, and helping those young players navigate that, I give them a lot of credit. How many freshman pitchers do you envision maybe having a real impact? That's a good question. There's certainly going to be some. I, I think when you look at the offset, you know, with, with Dawson Nets, um, Chandler Murphy, uh, Wesley Scott has uh, tremendous stuff as well. I think those three will, will help. How quickly they do it will be how they learn to just stay in their plan of what makes them successful and keep the game the same and keep the game slow. We'll certainly rely on our defense to help them do that. You know, both you know, Austin Wells and, and Matt Dyer do a great job behind the plate in terms of cultivating that for them and bringing them along, which will be an important responsibility of theirs. And then and defensively, I really like where we're at. Uh, in a much better position to to help our pitching staff be successful. So uh, it's not just about them. It's about their competitiveness, uh, their ability to slow the game down, and then using the rest of the team to, to help them be successful. Okay, how would you describe the urgency of getting to the tournament after not getting there the last two years? Can't do anything about it today. You know, I mean, we, we, can't, we can't win a game, you know, in – May or we can't get to the tournament on February 11th. We can put together a really good week of preparation to go out with really good fundamentals this weekend, really good competitive this weekend, and, and a character that displays what a championship team looks like. And when I mention creating an, an identity that's very clear that everybody is in tune with, I think our team's done a good job with that. I am very optimistic about the makeup of the team and you know you can't do you can't cry over spilled milk kind of thing it's it's two as near misses as you can i think the benefit of that is there's some players you know over those two years that have had a lot of success i mean we won 13 out of 14 games in the month of may last year and so it ju it all depends on how you frame it if you make it a thing it becomes a thing but if you don't and you put your focus on the task at hand and the work then you do that i haven't said anything relative to 2019 or missing the postseason. We're all there. You know, we're in a room. There, there's a pain, you know, that, that was associated with that. But do you make that a thing or do you just go to work? And I think they've made a good choice to go to work as our coaching staff and put the focus on what adjustments needed to be made. And I think we've done a really good job at that. And I think over time, you will see that, um, you know, as far as you know, urgency or personal mission, I want to win the national championship. Like, I want to win every game that we play. You know, when we step on the field, my anticipation is to win that contest, and we'll be prepared to do that. Baseball's a different game where it's not always the team with the best players, it's the team that plays the best that day. Therefore, you have to put the focus on the play and, 
and we have some veteran guys that know exactly what I'm talking about, and I think position as well to do that. Is your screen saver still the same on your computer? You said you had like the first four out as, as your screen saver. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think it it's something, I mean, I don't need any more fuel. Sure. Our players don't need any more fuel. I mean, you know, this is, you know, when you talk about establishing identity or competitive character, you know, that starts with who you are on the inside. I think there's so much media now and so much internet and so many things that players, coaches are exposed to that don't matter. What matters is how good are you at the task at hand, how mentally tough you are. And for me, that just means staying on the moment and focusing on the task at hand and doing things with a high level of maturity. So those are the things that I want to pass along to the players. You know, if something puts fire in their belly, that's great. But then you have to go and do the things you need to, do to execute. And so the answer is no, because I've forgotten about that. <laughs> Got uh, Garrett Urban slated to start the opener on Friday. Uh, what did he show you to, to put himself into that position? Yeah, I think he's a winner. I mean, I, in two seasons of college baseball, I think he's won like 23 or 24 games. I may be off by a game or two. Um, and, and frankly, you know, when you talk about improving things, it's about throwing strikes. And I think, you know, when you look at him and then and Quinn will start Saturday, um, you know, Vince will be a guy that we go to out of the bullpen. You know, the, the common thread and the three pitchers I just – mentioned is that they suffocate the strike zone, which makes it a lot easier to play defense. And, you know, I mean, I equate baseball and football a lot. Football is a game of turnovers, who wins that battle in time of possession. Baseball is just about taking as much free stuff as you can and cashing in on it, which offensively we've been really good at, and then limiting that on defense. And so, um, frankly, it just it comes down to strikes and strike zone pressure, and, and I feel good about him in, in that regard. You best describe that phrase you just used, suffocated the strike zone. Is it strikes? Is it balls that are just off the plate in, in combination? I think it's all encompassing. I think it's just it's creating pressure on the on the hitter, and you create pressure on the hitter by having count leverage, first pitch strikes, two of the first three, you know, the near misses, as you say, where the hitter has to make a decision on every pitch. When hitters can eliminate pitches because they know a pitcher can't throw home for strikes it allows them to command their at bat a lot better. And so if our guys can really make that difficult to do, um, soften hitters up, locate the fastball, change speeds, it puts them in a good position to be successful. And Jay, last year at times, and I used this phrase last year, these games were unwatchable. I mean, to go to a baseball game, you have to sit for four and a half hours because I go back to the Oregon game where I think the kid threw 80 pitches in an inning and a half. I mean, how do you improve that across the game? of college baseball now where you don't have these games that go four plus hours every every weekend well i think the game you're referring to we scored 28 runs so i'm never going to apologize for that um you know the uh with that um I, I think there's a big difference between talent and usable skill you know a, a pitcher throws 90 miles an hour 92 miles an hour somebody writes him up on twitter and a guy might take that the wrong way and think he's made it it's a whole nother deal to be a winner and to be a competitor. And there's only so many environments that you can create and build that. And some of it comes from within. And so the maturing steps that you have to go through, um, you know, some of that stuff, they don't come in with a, a great base on. Um, but you have a good development plan. You have an environment that breeds competitiveness. And then sometimes it's a little bit trial and error, you know, and um, I like the disposition of our team right now and program, frankly, because, you know, we have some experience, but we're not an old team either. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys that, um, you know, contributed last year. I mean, we were in a must win game the last game of the season and there was six freshmen, you know, in the starting lineup and, you know, had a great Pac-12, you know, series sweep, you know, with, with that dynamic. And so I think there's, I think it's just playing time's your best coach. Experience is your best coach. You know, it's, it's kind of that instant gratification society, and nobody is more impatient than I am. Those guys will tell you that. Um, we want to speed up that learning curve. I think this year we have taken some things that we needed to do better, addressed them, and created an environment to do that. But the game is, is the real teacher. How would you rate the strength of the Pac-12 this season and where you think Arizona fits in? 
I think it's always really good. I think it's, you know, we're either 1 or 1A in terms of best baseball conferences. It doesn't always get reflected in NCAA bids. Uh, that's what I believe it to be. Um, I think, you know, something that I want to drive home to our players is it's not about anybody else but our team, you know, and improvement on a daily basis and having the play in place for that. I think that there's a lot of great players in the league last year that moved on to professional baseball very quickly you know, in the draft. And so I think it's, it's a little maybe more wide open, but when you look around, teams have, you know, left-handed pitching, right-handed pitching, speed, power, solid hitting skills throughout their lineup. It always comes back to the play. Where we fit, again, I don't have to think about that right now. Um, I think we'll be much better positioned four weeks from now than we are today. And um, I'm looking forward to that, that challenge. I'm really looking forward to that challenge. A ton of top 25 non-conference teams. Was that a purpose? No. Um, I mean, I think if you look at it, there was an article on Baseball America yesterday with 10 teams listed as under the radar. These teams are going to have great seasons. We play six of them. Um, and if you go down the schedule, we actually had a, a pretty marquee series scheduled for this weekend that got canceled uh, late in the process, which is how this weekend came about. Uh, John Anderson from Minnesota was kind enough to play us. Um, we, which we just got that game scheduled in, in last fall at some point. They were in a Super Regional two years ago. The second weekend, Iowa feels really good about their team. Nebraska was in a regional that will play in San Diego. Central Michigan won 47 games. Rhode Island has been, you know, one of the flagship programs in the Atlantic 10. You go to Texas on a Tuesday. Um, they didn't have a great year last year, but I think that will last a long time. And then Houston is one of the top three mid-major teams in terms of winning percentage um, out there. New Mexico State's kind of been the kingpin of the WAC, San Diego State the kingpin of the Mountain West. And uh, in your bye weekend, you're kind of at mercy of who is available to play. So I, I, think, I think our schedule's in a great position. RPI will be no issue, and our team's really going to get tested through that group of teams. I know you just said that it's all about you, but um your biggest rival, Arizona State, kind of a consensus top 10 team in all the preseason polls. Is that a good thing for the league? I mean, I want every Pac-12 team to win every game that they play, and, and they are, are probably well positioned to do that. You know, they have, they have guys that you guys all read about and write about that are going to get picked high in the draft, and, you know, I, th I think that's great. I think UCLA was in a similar position last year, and I think they ended up winning the conference. And, and again, that stuff all – kind of sorts itself out, comes down to the play. And, um, you know, I'm all for, I'm all for, you know, everybody in our league doing as well as they can in non-league because that's going to help the Wildcats down the road. Coach, are you going to experiment with any lineup changes early on? Yeah, I, I think, and I've explained this to a lot of the players that I've had meetings with over the last few days, is I think we have 11 starters. I think we have 11 everyday players. Um, and, and there's no way around that because you have nine spots, you know, in the order. So yeah, you'll see some different combinations. Um, and the goal is to win every game that we play while we're ultimately figuring out what our best team looks like, you know, in terms of who's on defense, you know, where are we hitting guys in the order. And uh, I try to pride myself on putting players in position to be successful on the position player side of it. I think we have some unique versatility to do that, but I think there's a real core top of the team that, that you get a chance to see, you know, on a consistent basis out there. Where do you see Mac Bingham uh, fitting into that mix? Well, I mean, statistically, he was one of our best players over the past three weeks. And it was, it was very impressive. I think he's very intelligent. I think he's a great athlete. He scored a million touchdowns in high school football. Uh, can really run. Has a, a, a disposition that I think will – I think he's a, a future, you know, face of our program or Arizona baseball type type guy, he's going to contribute immediately, but he's in that mix of 11 guys that, you know, there's nine spots for. So it'll kind of be a game to game, um, you know, day to day basis with with probably six, six of those guys. And it's just going to kind of play itself out. But I really anticipate him being a real important part of what we're doing. Did you see this team ranking near the top of in the NCAA and run scored? I hope so. Um, you know, I, I know they, they don't have a lot of leeway as far as what the expectation is in terms of quality of at bat, uh, ability to move the offense, manage the strike zone, and those types of things. And um, I, 
I think as long as they understand that it's not who we write in the lineup, it's how those guys do what we expect them to do, then I think that's a real possibility. But, you know, the work, the work will continue to need to be put in. The mindset will need to be right. I'm glad a couple of them are back there listening. Dante's smiling right now. I'm telling you exactly what I'm talking about. Austin's laughing at me. So. What, how, what do you envision Vince Finelli's role being on the staff? Pitch important innings when, when the game is in the balance. Could end up starting at times. Could end up being in in the fifth inning where we need to swing the momentum because he pitches with great tempo, great strike zone pressure, and he can change speeds and has legitimate out pitches as weapons. And just have one of those guys that you feel like your team plays better when he's on the mound and could be to finish games at times. So, The 22nd uh, pitch clock that's been implemented this year, what impact do you envision that ha having? How do you? How did you prepare your, your players and coaching staff to, to manage that? Yeah, I, I didn't notice a ton of difference. We had the umpires in the fall games kind of hold us in check or accountable to that. Um, on offense, I didn't really sense any difference in the tempo of doing what we needed to do. Um, I think there's, there's ways out of it. I think if the pitcher just steps off the rubber, it resets or, or something along those lines. Um, so with that in play, I don't anticipate it really changing much of anything. It's just kind of one of those things Major League Baseball is exploring it, wants to do it, or Minor League Baseball gets passed down to us. Uh, is everybody healthy? Season, yeah, relatively. Yeah, re uh, Bryce Collins is out for the season, um, obviously, which we've we've discussed at length. Um, you know, there's a few guys that are kind of nicked up, and you know, it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. You know, there's uh, been a sick cold flu thing that's gone around. You know, a number of teams in college baseball. I know um, we've got a couple guys that have been struggling with that, but I anticipate us being in a good spot, health-wise. Any more questions for coach? All right, thank you guys. Thanks.